Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws bringing you the 11th video in the Advanced Programming in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we'll be going over the bitwise operators in Monkey, so what they do exactly and how they might be useful in our games. So, let's just get started. I'm going to give you kind of an introduction to these operators. Basically, Bitwise operators are used to perform operations on data stored in memory at the bit level. And a bit, if you don't know, is the most basic unit of memory. And it exists in only two states, either off or on, or zero or one, as you might have heard it referred to. And in Monkey, you can only perform these bitwise operations on the integer type and in monkey integers are 32 bits in size so just kind of show you what that looks like it's going to look like in memory you're going to have 32 32 bits and each one can be either 0 or 1 but just for demonstration purposes we're going to pretend that we're dealing with just an 8 bit piece of data which is also referred to as a byte so the way it's going to look so visually is something like this and the way you can figure out the number that's stored in this byte or the, how much it can actually hold is starting from the right side each spot is going to represent two to a certain power starting at zero so this far right bit represents a value of one or two to the zero this next bit is two or two to the first then 4 which is 2 to the second, 8 which is 2 to the third, and so on. So now going into our main function we're going to create uh, an integer and I'm going to call it byte and we're, once again we're going to pretend that it's only 8 bits when it's actually 32. And we're going to assign this to some value I say just 5 keep it simple. And so the way this 5 looks in memory in this byte it's going to be something like this all of these are off and then the fourth and the or the four and the one are on. And you add those up and that makes five. I hope that makes sense. So if I were to change this to let's say seven, then we're gonna have one. We need to make this a on to give us two for a total of three, and then the four gives a total of seven. And if we were to set this to zero, of course it would shut them all off. And if we set this to 1, it's going to be this 1. If we set it to something like 64, it's going to set this one way over here to be on. And, and that's pretty much the way it works. It just adds up these bits together to form that value. And for now, I'm just going to leave this at 5 so I can demonstrate what happens when we use these bitwise operators. So the first two I'm going to show you are the shift left and shift right operators. And these operators are SHL for shift left and SHR for shift right. And what these shift left and shift right operators are going to do is shift all the bits, either left or right, the number of spaces you specify. So, for example, say we wanted to take this byte and reassign it itself with all of its bits shifted to the left two spaces. So, what this is going to do is going to take both of these what you're gonna see is these ones get shifted to the left two so this first one is gonna go one two to here and the second one's gonna go one two to here then everything else to the right is gonna be padded with zeros so what we'll end up here with here is I think the 16 which is two to the fourth plus the four here two to the second so we'll end up we should end up with 20 and just so you can see it work we're gonna print it off so the run, there you go, byte is 20. And now if we want to shift it even more, we can say 5. This is going to shift it way over here. Three more spaces. This 2. And then everything else is going to fill in with zeros. So that's the way the shift left works. If we wanted to shift right, let's say we wanted to shift right 5. So we're going to start with our 5. Set this back to 1. Set these back to 0. So now we got 5, 4 plus 1. If this were to shift right 5, these would be shifted way off into no man's land, and then it would end up with everything being 0. Because it pads in to the left, all the 0, so it ends up with 0. 
and so let's say let's go back to five and we'll shift it to the right just one so it's gonna shift shift one this one shifts off into no man's land so we're just left with this here and it should be two or two to the first and there you go and now let's move on to the other operators and these operators are just ways to compare two values to each other and to get a new value so the first one is the and operator the or operator which is the pipe character and then the exclusive or which is our old friend the squiggly so the first one the bite the way you can set this up and I'm going to show you. you can also shorten these just like with the math operators so instead of doing byte equals byte shift right one, you can do byte equals byte shift right equals one, and that will just assign and shift in one operation. But this one we're just going to, we're using the and, so we can do the and equals, and we're going to compare it to some random number, let's say 68. 68. And so now the way this AND operator works is it takes the first byte, which was our original value of 5. So I'm going to write that up. That's our 5. It's going to compare it to 68, which is something like this. So we've got 64 plus 4. And we'll, oh, no, no, that's 2. This is 4. So this is 68. Let's compare them to each other, and wherever these values both have bits that are on, that bit is going to be on in the resulting value. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. So this was going to look something like this. You have two zeros, a zero and a one. Those aren't the same, or those aren't both on. And these zeros go through zero. Now here we have a one and a one. So that one's going to go through, and they're going to end up with zero and zero. And this final value is going to be 4. So let's double check, make sure. And I've got 0 because oh, <laughs> because it's shifted. OK, let's do that again. There we go, 4. Okay, and now the next one I'm going to show you is the OR, or the pipe, and to set this up, so you can see it, you can do it differently, you can use two numbers together, and we're going to just compare 68, because I like that number, to, let's say, 44, and so the way this is going to look is our 68 compared with the OR operator to 44, which looks... What's that 30? It's got a 32 in it. And then it has an 8 for 40 and then a 4 for 44. So when you compare these two numbers together using the OR, what the OR does is it's checking if th there's at least one on or they're both on. And at that spot, it's going to be on. That one's going to go through. So. Here, they're both zero, so that's going to be zero. Here we have at least one zero, so that's fine. Then we have another or at least one zero, so that's going to go through. Then both zero. We have one zero here. We have a zero here. Or we have two ones, which also goes through with the or operator. And then zeros and zeros there. So this value we end up with is, what, 64 plus 3296 plus 12. So 108 should be. Bam! 108. And finally we have the exclusive OR operator. And what the exclusive OR operator does is kind of like the regular OR, except we're going to pick, uh, let's pick 68 again because that's my favorite number so far. So comparing to the our new value, which is 108, we have 0, 110, 1100. Comparing it to with the exclusive OR to our old 68, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, 0. And 
And what this does is it compares the two bits and only if they're different will it result in one. So in this case they're both the same, so this is a zero. This one they're both the same, so it's a zero. This one they're different, so it's a one. And this one they're different, it's a one. Oops, a one. And then these are the rest are all the same. That the ones are same and zero zeros and zero zero. So this resulting number should be thirty-two plus eight, so forty. And I'll build that and we see forty. And now you might be thinking, well, how is this useful when making a game? And honestly, I haven't personally reached that level where I look at a problem and think, ah, oh, bitwise operators would be really useful right here. But I can tell you one instance where I know they're useful, and that's with dealing with options or flags in our game. So the way this is typically set up is if you, you want to have several options or flags that are either turned on or off, and they're all going to be stored in one variable that you, know, you can pass it around and check it against for certain options to be on or off so you can do different things in your game or in your editor or whatever. So in this case we're just going to set up just for example some options for a game and these might typically be constants that you have. And you can say like if it full if you want your game to be full screen you'll have an option that's either on or off for that. If you want your game to be to have sound on, that can be on or off, or things like that. But I'm just going to use generic what just option names. And how you'll set these up is you're going to initialize them with each value that is represented by each bit starting from the very first one which would be 2 to the 0. And 2 to the 0 is 1. So now your next one is going to be the next bit's value, which is 2 to the 1, or 2 to the 1st, which is 2. And then your next little option, we'll call it option 3, and it will be 2 to the 2nd, or 4, and so on. So I'll create these next few real fast. I'll say option 5 is 8, and good thing I went in order, we'll just call this option 6. There is no option for okay. And then now you can just create an options variable and what's what's gonna happen is we're gonna be able to stick in whichever options we want on or off in this one variable and then we'll just easily be able to check against it and see which options are on or, or off. So well, initially it's gonna be zero, so the way it's gonna look and again assuming it's only 8 bits but it's actually 32 so you can have 30 well 31 options because one of the bits is reserved for the sign whether it's positive or negative so now say starting out we want our option 1 and option 2 to be on by default so the way you set up these options to be stored into the option variable is you compare them with the or operator so now what this is going to do is going to take option 2, which looks like this, option 2, compare it with the OR to option 3, which looks like that. The resulting value, which if you remember, the OR will transfer the 1 if they're both, if they're different, or they're both 1. So in this case we have this one's different, and this space is different, so they both go through as 1. So now you can see inside options we have option 1 or option 3 and option 2 on. So now I'll say okay well that's great I want to add another one so the easiest way to do that you can just say options and do the or equals option 6 and this is going to take what we had before right here compare it using the or so like this with option 6 Oops, option six. And it's gonna the resulting value is going to be zero, 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 one, because those are different, these are the same, or they're both zero, these are different, these are different, and these are the same. So now you have these three options on option six, option three, and option two. So now if you wanted to check if these options are on, you use the if and checking against the options variable, you're gonna use the and and then 
whichever option you want to check for. So in this case, we're going to check for option six. And when you do this, I'm just going to close this real fast. When you do this, what's gonna, what you're going to have is the options value, which is this. Then using the and with option six, you're going to get this and then zero. This is option six or 16. And the resulting value is going to be wherever these are the same or wherever they're both on or both one. So your resulting value is actually going to be option six. But it's e the one thing you can rely on with this is it's either going to be this value or it's going to be zero. Because let's say we wanted this to be option five, which is eight. So right here. So when you do the and compare, none of these are both one, so they're all going to be zero. And so that value, that the result of this and operation is going to be zero. So all you need to check is to make sure it's not zero or if it's greater than zero. And we're going to change this back to option six. And then we're going to print option six is enabled. And we're going to run it, make sure it works. And you see option six is enabled. And now let's say we want to check for option five, just so you can see. Check for option five. Oh, option five is not enabled. And that's pretty much it for the bitwise operators. I hope this all made sense. I tried to break it down as simple as possible, but I tend to rush things and forget things. So if I did, send me an email at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave a comment. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.